In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Klein-Gordon equation for a relativistic scalar particle confined to the surface of a two-sphere. Now, this is extremely similar to the Schrodinger equation version of this problem, which is for a non-relativistic scalar particle, and I've actually already made a video on the Schrodinger equation version of the problem. If you're interested in seeing it, there's a link in the description. Now, the mathematical process here is actually so similar that I repurposed some of the text that applies to both from that original Schrodinger equation video for this one. And as a result, if you've seen the Schrodinger equation version, there's gonna be a lot of repetition here. So if you have seen the Schrodinger equation version, it may actually be worth it for you to go to the very end of this video and just see the few differences that show up there. The reason why I've included all the details that are common to both videos in this video is because I don't want people who haven't seen the Schrodinger equation version to feel like they need to watch that video in order to understand this video. Let's get going. Let's get started with solving the Klein-Gordon equation for a relativistic scalar quantum particle confined to a two-sphere. This is the second time on my channel that I have shown how to solve a quantum wave equation in a curved space, the first being the Schrodinger equation version of this problem. There's a link to that video in the description, and it's the first relativistic example of such a problem that I've presented on my YouTube channel. You will see that despite the unusual nature of this problem, the Klein-Gordon equation ends up taking on a familiar form. Additionally, despite the fact that there is no potential, the energy levels still get discretized for an unusual reason. A two-sphere is a closed space, therefore simultaneous imposition of continuity, single-valuedness, smoothness, and normalizability cause the wave function to be restricted to discrete harmonics, where the corresponding energy eigenvalues must therefore be discretized. Normally, one solves the free Klein-Gordon equation in an open space where these conditions aren't enough to yield energy discretization, specifically for this problem, the Klein-Gordon equation will end up taking on the form of the orbital angular momentum squared eigenvalue equation, and we know that imposing these conditions on that problem yields discretization, and when put in the context of this problem, all that is reflecting is that the closed nature of the space is causing exactly the same effects. More specifically, the two-sphere problem reproduces the orbital angular momentum squared eigenvalue problem, and these conditions were only enough to produce discretized eigenvalues in that problem due to the finite extent of the angular variables. Here, it is the closed nature of the spherical space that induces discretization because that is why the variables have finite extent in this problem. The basic process here is going to be to use differential geometry to derive the Laplacian on a two-sphere and then insert it into the Klein-Gordon equation. We will then make quick work of solving the Klein-Gordon equation given its familiar form. In our effort to derive the Laplacian on a two-sphere, the first thing we need is a convenient parameterization of a two-sphere. Spherical coordinates at constant radius provides us with such a parameterization. If we let the radius vary, then they would parameterize the entirety of three-dimensional Euclidean space, but because we fix the radius to be a constant, it ends up just parameterizing a spherical subspace. We can insert this parameterization of the two-sphere into the line element of 3D Euclidean space to collapse it down to the line element of the corresponding two-spherical curved subspace of flat 3D Euclidean space. The line element of 3D Euclidean space space and Cartesian coordinates is simply this. To insert the two-sphere parameterization, we must compute the differentials of the Cartesian coordinates on the two-sphere, i.e. the differentials of the spherical parameterization given above. This can be easily done using the chain rule and the product rule. It simply gives these results there. Plugging these into that gives us this result. We can then evaluate the squares and we get these two canceling cross terms. Getting rid of them gets us to this. Then we can use the Pythagorean identity and some factoring to finish the simplification ultimately to get to this. We can then read off the metric tensor for the surface of a two-sphere of radius capital R. We find the metric to be this. We can then insert that into the Christoffel symbols given by this formula. We find these results for the Christoffel symbols with all the derivatives done. We can then insert the metric components and the Christoffel symbols into this formula for the Laplacian written in terms of covariant derivatives. If we ignore all the terms that are zero due to zero Christoffel symbols and zero metric components, just leaving behind the non-zero terms, we are left with this. We can then plug in the non-zero metric components and Christoffel symbols to arrive at this value. Simplifying a little bit further gets us to this result. That's the Laplacian 
on a two-sphere. We can then insert that into the Klein-Gordon equation to get the Klein-Gordon equation on a two-sphere. Rearranging the equation a little bit gives us this result. We might consider separating variables at this point, but this is actually unnecessary because we recognize the orbital angular momentum squared operator on the left side of the equation. Well, specifically, this is proportional to it. There is this prefactor here. Therefore, the Klein-Gordon equation has reduced down to the L squared eigenvalue problem, and we already know the complete set of smooth, continuous, single-valued, and orthonormal solutions to that problem from computing the orbital angular momentum eigenfunctions. See the link in the description to my video on that. Specifically, the aforementioned set of solutions are simply the normalized spherical harmonics. We see that these spherical harmonics satisfy this orbital angular momentum squared eigenvalue problem. Now if we compare this equation to that one, being careful to keep track of factors of h bar squared and minus signs, we realize that we must actually make this assignment in order to make these equations match. And because this is the complete set of physical solutions and is defined only for a discrete set of values of L and M, we see that by making that assignment here, we're actually discretizing the energy because only energies are allowed that ultimately collapse this down to equal this for non-negative integer L's. We can then solve for those discrete energy levels just by solving for E in this equation, and that gets us this. And of course, because the complete set of orthonormal solutions is a spherical harmonics, they must just be our wave function. So that is the complete solution to the Klein-Gordon equation for a relativistic scalar particle confined to a two-sphere. So now you know how to solve the Klein-Gordon equation for a relativistic scalar quantum particle confined to a two-sphere, which is really cool. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.